So now in this video we're going to look at the 555 timer in monostable mode. So right now it's in its stable mode, it's one mode of stable and that is low. If I give a low pulse to the trigger pin based on the capacitor and timing resistor I have somewhere about a second the output is high and then it goes back to low. So it stays low, that's why it's stable until I force it high it's not stable high because it flips back to low after the time that I set. We have to power the integrated circuit, pin number 8, to the positive supply, also known as VCC. And then pin number 1, we have to connect to ground. Also, you'll notice here that we got pin number 4 to the positive supply. There is a pin 8, so it goes uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8. Pin 8, the top pin, is to the positive supply up there, and pin number 1 here to the uh, gray jumper straight across there is to the negative supply. Pin number 4, as uh, we said before, that's the reset pin. It's waiting for a low input, basically a connection to ground for the most part, just like uh, pin number 2 is. We don't want it to do anything. We don't want it to reset in the circuit, so we just put it to the positive supply, and uh, that disables it. And to uh, trigger it, we got the trigger pin right here to set the output high temporarily and also start charging the capacitor. We'll look at that coming up. We have a pull-up resistor telling pin 2 the trigger pin not to do anything. And uh, so that's keeping 5 volts there as long as that's open. Once this is closed, we have a direct connection to ground that brings it down to 0 volts and tells the trigger pin to jump into action. And uh, so here you can see we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor to pin 2 the trigger pin. I just jumped it over to the VCC pin because it's going directly to the positive supply right there. And uh, so connecting it there is just like connecting it to any other direct spot to the positive supply. And we got a jumper here instead of a switch. If I go to uh, ground, we got a direct connection there. I can also go to the positive supply, it doesn't matter. The other side of this resistor is the positive supply. No currents going in or out of the uh, input pin. And uh, so, so that's just fine too if I hold that there actually it'll keep the output high but in any case you just give it a quick pulse and uh, then the uh, timing jumps into action for the timing we have a capacitor now pin number seven when the output is low so the blue LED is lit up that means it's connected pretty much directly to ground right there same thing with pin number seven it's connected pretty much directly to ground when we give a low signal to the uh, input there it sets the output high and turns pin 7 off. So pin 7 just stops conducting. It's like a switch that you turn off. And then the current that was trickling through the resistor being sucked directly to ground starts charging the capacitor up to about two-thirds of the uh, supply voltage. And then once it hits two-thirds of the supply voltage, so a larger value resistor will take uh, more time to raise the voltage of a particular capacitor, Larger value capacitors will take more current for their voltage to rise. So you can go with lower value capacitors, higher value resistors, and uh, vice versa, you can go lower. But in uh, any case, capacitor gets to two-thirds supply voltage. That sets the output low. Also, pin 7 connects directly to ground, so the capacitor instantly discharges, and it's ready for another cycle. The uh, 555 timer stays like that again until you give the uh, low pulse. So we'll look at that here. You can see we got the uh, capacitor. So pin 6 is the threshold pin. It's monitoring the voltage of the capacitor. Pin 7 up there is the discharge pin where it discharges. But uh, like right now, right now it's connected to ground. So any current trickling through the resistor just goes to ground and uh, the capacitor. If it has any charge goes to ground, it gets discharged and stays discharged. When the output goes high, and uh, this is going to be quick here, but uh, while the LED was red, current was going through the resistor and then into the capacitor. And then as soon as the output went low, the capacitor discharged. So that's how you set the timing, when it gets to two-thirds of the supply voltage. And finally, we come to the LEDs at the output. So I've gone over these quite a bit in recent videos. I'm going to kind of rush through this really quick. But you can see for the uh, blue LED up here, I'm going to use a higher value resistor to 1000 ohm instead of 220 because the blue LED is just naturally brighter. But in any case, you can see we got the positive supply there. And so the only way for it to light up is if it heads to ground in some form. And uh, 
with the red LED here with 220 ohm resistor that side is to ground and so you need the uh, positive supply right there in order for the uh, red LED to light up and we'll look at that on here so to keep things from getting too crowded pin number three the output I have moving across to where the LEDs are there is the uh, positive side of the supply to the one kilo ohm to the anode and then cathode to the output for the red LED we got the uh, anode at the output and then the cathode the 220 ohm resistor right there so right now the output is low and then now the outputs high right there so hope that makes sense that's the end of this video make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can that helps out the most but just watching videos helps out a ton thanks to everybody that does that I have links down in the description make sure you check them all out I will see you in the next video